Okay, so this might be one of the most important videos you're ever going to see in this channel because we're going to be talking about psychics and, you know, psychics are interesting because this is a relatively modern phenomenon where people don't want to be employed by, you know, a, a wage job and they just want to like be in charge of their own time and I think this is a really fascinating concept. I actually do think this might be the future for like, uh, part-time jobs where people are just going to instead of like having to go to a job and, and have like a schedule of hours they're gonna have like a form of like app where you can like pick up what shift you want and what hours and you get paid according to those to those hours or shifts you take you know I think it's really interesting and you know me seeing this in person I actually seen how a lot of people are actually digging this like side gigs and part-time but you're not really like employed thing it's it's really interesting and it might be the future so just giving you guys a heads up on this uh, side gigs you know before I actually started doing this YouTube thing I decided to like look into side gigs and, and ways to make money and I came up with this like really nice strategy which I'm actually still using to this day and it's actually what led me to get the cargo van and all that so it's gonna be a really interesting video I hope you guys like it if you're young and you watch this like you this might actually completely change your life you might not see it of money as like this massive wall that you have to first work for and you, this is actually like you know once you see how, how easy it is to build wealth especially if you live in a first world country like it's just gonna it's gonna blow your mind guys and also one thing before we actually begin uh, I actually set this up in two ways because as you might see some of the options seem kind of like oh yeah that's a, you know that's an S tier but I'm actually gonna be basing this off how easy it is to get this and how much money you can make fast because you know some of these like yeah you can make a lot of money but the chances of you making money are really small because you have to first like beat all the competition and, and how saturated a certain side gig or eventually job is so you know it's gonna be really interesting I'm gonna base it on those two things and I'll explain as to why you know what led me to that decision and also um, it's gonna be a reality check for some people Yes, guys, you do have to provide value in order to make money. You can't just sit doing nothing and make money. So, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting video. However, some of them are actually really easy to make money from, and you're just going to find them really interesting. So, yeah, anyway, let's not waste any time. Let's start doing this. Okay, so the first form of making money is actually just getting a job. And no, this is not ironic. The The reason I put the Wojak with the McDonald's uniform is because, you know, at first, I mean, if you don't have any assets, you don't have a car, and you live with parents or something like that, you really don't have any form of making money through your own, like, self-employed unless you like work on the internet but then that's really competitive and we're gonna get that into the future so honestly the easiest and fastest way to make money is to simply offer your time and you know if you're young the easiest place you can get money is either from a your parents to helping family out like working for them or you know the getting a job and you know the easiest job in at least in a first world country is just fast food so I mean you can get any jobs in fast food if you're young like 16 17 you can easily get a job there yeah the pay isn't gonna be extravagant but if you have no expenses guys that's a really good foundation and it also teach you just how you know it will give you a different light on fast food workers because a lot of people don't treat fast food workers right and it always makes me mad when I see that so anyway guys uh, in terms of money it's easy to make it yeah don't don't rely on it forever let's just stepping stone don't think that you're gonna be a fast food worker forever unless you're like really into owning brands I guess I don't know but anyway uh, in terms of difficulty and in terms of ease of money I give this a B and yes it's kind of high there it's a B tier but we'll get into the tiers and what they mean in a minute but yeah fast food uh, getting a job B tier for me all right, so the second one is actually Amazon FBA. This is just like a form of online business where you essentially open like a subscription with Amazon and you can list stuff on, on Amazon. Uh, a lot of people tend to use things from Alibaba or AliExpress and they just like uh, ship into the warehouse and then they post them and then they get a marker from that and like essentially they make a, a, a tiny percentage of it. Uh, it used to be really competitive a couple years ago when it like first blew up. Now uh, it somewhat is but not really that much because people thought it was a scam. Uh, to be fair, Amazon FBA does have its, its plus but the only issue with it is you kind of have to compete a lot. It's very competitive first and finding your products like chances are if it's on the internet somebody has already made a website or posted a Amazon listing with that product so you really have to be up to date and you really have to figure out what product can you find that nobody else has so it's really competitive however if you manage to get it right and you manage to sell your products a lot you will make less than a fast food worker according to statistics uh, but yeah I mean honestly guys it's just about volume so if you can sell a hundred uh, sales a day then and you make two dollars that's 200 bucks a day I mean can you do it it's gonna take some time it's probably gonna take a year or so to fully get the hang of it but once you do man it can actually be a pretty decent you know side income it's cash flow yeah you have to continuously restock the product so that's gonna be a hassle but 
I mean, it's not the worst. Have I done it? I, I wanted to, but once I saw just how like small the margins of profit are, I kind of got scared away. So I'll put it in C tier. It's not really D tier because it does work. It just takes a really long time and it's really competitive. So C tier for Amazon FBA. Okay, so next up is actually stock trading. And to be honest, there's actually a story with this because back in 2020, I did decide to become a trader and I had plenty of success with it. Like I kept hit, like timing it perfectly because the market would go way down and like the pandemic and I would buy calls and it'd go way up. Uh, I probably got like uh, the stops would be hit in the algos or something. And you know, I had plenty of success. However, you know, trading for me, unless you're following the long-term trend, it's kind of difficult. And if you're following the long-term trend, it's better to be a swing trader or, you know, it's better to just simply buy and hold than trading. However, if you do have some money every month that you make consistently, let's say you have dividends and you make like $500 a month from those dividends and, you, and you're willing to gamble those $500 a month on trading, as long as you can replenish that income every month, Honestly, I don't have an issue with trading, but you know, personally, I never seen a trader like, like that works full time without having a course or having a YouTube or having a, a real estate. You know, there's I haven't seen a trader that doesn't have a side source of income. So, until I've been proven wrong, I don't think trading is a good like short term career. You can't just t take five thousand dollars and turn it into a hundred thousand dollars in, in a year and be you know successful. You really have to pay your tuition. And I, I've never seen a trader, like I said, that has done this full time without a source of income on the side. So uh, same as Amazon FBA. Can you do it? Yes. Is it likely that you will do it? No. In fact, statistics say that you will probably lose your money if you trade and you eventually just decide to become a long term investor. Yours truly did the same thing. You know, I tried to be a trader and it just didn't work out. <laughs> anyway, on to the next one. Okay, so next up is Airbnb. Now, Airbnb is pretty interesting because in the beginning, it had a humble purpose. The purpose of it was that if you had a spare room in your house, you could rent it out and make some side money. But eventually, it, you know, people realized that, oh, what if I just, what if I just turn it into an investment? And they started like buying properties in like really popular tourist areas. And they eventually ended up pricing out the locals. And there's a huge controversy on that. Also, the horror stories from Airbnbs are pretty scary, like uh, people finding cameras in the room rooms and stuff like that so you know it has had its fair share of controversies uh, however you know I I don't know I don't want to like say it's a good investment because you know now with houses how expensive they are the reason they're so expensive is because investors showed up and investors they don't care about the locals they don't care about the the price they just want to put their money to work right and they don't care what they pay that's why essentially why houses keep pricing month after month after month right once the investors showed up everything just went to crap you know uh and you know airbnb uh, it's it's i mean you can make some really nice side income. Let's say you have a, a, a house in, in like your second house, right? And you're not using it. Why not just put it in Airbnb and make a hundred bucks a day? You know, if it's in a good area, I've seen people can easily make, you know, three, $5,000 a month from having a spare house. And if you're willing to like split your rooms in four, you can make some wild money from Airbnb. Is it ethical? I don't think it's very ethical, but it is a side income. You know, you can make money from it. Uh, will you? No, you need a house. Or you need to break the law, <laughs> yes, sublease or something. So, yeah, it, the thing is, it, it is proven income though. Like I've actually seen people make pl plenty of money from it. Uh, so I'll put it in the C tier. Uh, C tier means that yeah, it, it can work. It does require training though. Actually, no, let's put it in B tier because you can make plenty of money from it. The thing is, you need a house first, and also you need to you know be able to tell if you're if the people that are staying with you or the people that you're staying with are actually trustable. So there are some risks with it, but is, there is a possibility of massive income, especially if you can automatize it. If you have two, three houses and, and you know, you're know you not, and you're unethical and you don't care about locals or anything like that, yeah, you can make plenty of money with Airbnb, you know? So we'll put it on B tier for now. So next up is actually one that's really interesting. It's called Amazon Flex. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking your car and you're just driving for Amazon where you deliver packages to like, uh, like routes that you pick up on the app. This is actually what I said in the beginning that eventually people are gonna use this system where you instead of like working for a fast food, you're just gonna go to the McDonald's app, pick up an hour shift and I'll say you wanna work five hours, okay five hours, that's 90 bucks and you pick up the hour shift. I think it's really interesting. I think you know the, the package delivery aspect of it is pretty cool. Uh, I personally tried it, it's really neat. Uh, one thing that I didn't like though is that you can get sent really far away and also you might get an unfair amount of stops because you know you get a stop that's 
it's one here and then like one over here and then one in the middle and you kind of have like zigzag around so it's kind of crazy you can easily like lose plenty of what you make from gas so that's not really good however if you do have a strategy around it and you know how to deal with it i think you can make some decent money from it uh, so yeah it's actually really neat i'll give it an a tier because all you need is a car for it and i mean the reason i put the job in b tier and amazon flex on the a tier is because you know it can be a stepping stone from your job so you know you go from having no car and a job to having a car and then you don't you quit your job and then you go to the side gigs and you do amazon flex i think that's a fantastic upgrade i, I personally think it's great so yeah i'll put it on a tier for this one Okay, so next up is the beer with dollars. This is actually a subreddit called Beer Money, where the point of this subreddit is to just like find tips on making money online. And the way these people do it is they do things like, uh, you know, taking receipts or, or coupons and like uh, they use apps that do coupons and all that. They do surveys, they do uh, referrals, they do uh, essentially like online works like Appen and all these kinds of like shady businesses that, you know, it's kind of weird, but they're online and they do make money. Uh, you know, I, I think it's an interesting site. I personally have checked it out. However, with the amount of like micromanagement you gotta do to like at least make $500 a month, I'd rather just work a side gig that's, you know, more accessible for anybody like DoorDash or something like that. So, I mean, it's, if you're really good at micromanaging stuff and you have, you can keep your mind on different tasks during the day, like, okay, yeah, I gotta take a, a picture of this receipt. Oh yeah, I gotta go to the, and uh, this and take a, a uh, screenshot oh i gotta do this little survey you know if you can do all of that i think you can easily make 100 to 200 dollars a month just by doing that and it only takes maybe like five ten minutes a day so it you do have to micromanage a lot but you know i've actually found some really good ones from uh the, the subreddit like the amazon shopper panel well all you have to do is just take 10 pictures of receipts and you can get ten dollars a month which is really literally one dollar per receipt that's pretty good Another one I've seen is people doing uh, like shopping hauls where if you can if you can really flex your grocery budget and you, what you actually buy for the week, you can make decent money. Like I said, it's a lot of micromanaging and you know, if you're somebody that just likes making money and going to work, it, you're not going to like it, but it is a form of money income. However, you know, with all the micromanaging you got to do, I'd say it's better just to get a job. However, you know, if you if you're really, it's kind of similar to like credit card churning. If you're really able to keep track of many small things at the same time, I'd say it's a good income source. It's actually really easy to make money from it if you, you know, if you can do that. So I'll put it in C tier. All right. So next up is Turo. Now Turo is actually pretty interesting because what you do is that you list your car on that app, and people that want to rent cars, they can look at that car, and if they like it, they can rent it. It's actually the alternative to just like renting a car from like an airport or something like that. And I think it's pretty cool. I personally have rent cars from Turo and honestly I never had any issues with them I rented Tesla I rented a Mini Cooper I rented a Mustang and they were all really fun cars uh, I actually haven't heard any horror stories from anybody else that has like rented on Turo however I have seen that you know some people can if you don't like know how to take care of your car it can get beat up really badly and you know I wouldn't do the thing where you buy like a new car and list it on Turo and try to like have like a car fleet I, that, that seems pretty silly to me because they, they can get pretty beat up and also the maintenance and depreciation of the cars can hugely uh, damage your how much you make for per person per day uh, if anything what i would do is i would get like really cheap cars maybe cars like under six seven thousand dollars like corollas or four fiestas and stuff like that and i would put them on the app i would not put a tesla not no way i would never do that unless it's like a, a salvage tesla that i rebuilt for like nineteen thousand dollars or something you know uh, but it, some people can use it as a way to like make extra money or some people do it as a way to essentially have a free car however you know you're you're kind of gambling if you essentially think you can get a free car from turo because you know the wear and tear is going to destroy it uh, I mean, I've seen people do this. If you're in a really popular area, people can easily make two, three thousand dollars per car per per month. So, uh, I mean, it depends on the area you're in. If you're in the middle of nowhere, I don't think you're gonna make much. But if you're like in a really popular area, you can easily pay your car payment. And if you get a huge cheap car, you can make that car like two, three times in a in a year. So, I say it's pretty good. You know, it's a good side of side of income. A little easier than Airbnb. I mean, unless the only issue would be that you don't have a place to put the cars, but. You can work with that, you know, if, if, you, if you're really thinking of doing this business. I think it's a B tier, honestly. I'll put it in B tier. 
Okay, next up is actually an interesting one called Rapify, where essentially what you do is that you take your car to them, and if you get approved, they can wrap your car in different ways, and for every, I think, 100 miles, they pay you 10 bucks or something like that, and what they do is they essentially make your car a, a driving advertisement, and, you know, you can get some really cool wraps, but you can also get some really uh, strange ones, I... I mean, I guess if you want to rock the beer, I, <laughs> I, I guess, you know, but anyway, uh, you know, I think this is actually pretty good if you're starting out where you, you essentially finance a car for work, for business, and you, you want to do like Amazon Flex or DoorDash or something, and if you, the car payment is like 250 bucks, so you do Rapify, you have to drive 2,500 miles, but you can easily do that if you're doing it full time. And then you wrap your car, you get 250 bucks from Rapify, and the car payment is 250. So essentially, that means you get a free car. Or I guess like the ultimate form of this would be that you build a Turo fleet and then you put a wrap on them. <laughs> you put Rapify on all of them, and if they all drive like a thousand miles, but well, you can make like a thousand month, a thousand a month or something. So you know, it has its pros and it has its cons. It really depends on you know if you're willing to have your car wrapped uh, with an advertisement for essentially three months or so. I mean, not, it's not for everybody, and and you know the money that you make from it, it's kind of weird, especially since you're driving around a car with an advertisement. So I'll put it in C tier, just like your money. Yeah, if you're willing to look like an advertisement, I guess it can make sense. However, I don't think everyone wants to walk around with an advertisement on their car. So C tier it is. All right, next up is uh, crypto mining. Now, personally, I have tried crypto mining, and uh, back when I started doing this, like it actually worked really well for me. I like I ROI on my mining rig in like five, six months. It was pretty crazy, especially since it was like a full six GPU, thirty seventy rig. Uh, but after that, I got really greedy because I thought, oh my god, crypto mining is the future. Bitcoin going to one hundred K or something, and I got really inspired by like the Ethereum because I actually do believe in Ethereum as a cryptocurrency, and you know I. I, I basically like expanded my mining rig and I built three of them and I did this around 2021 where like people were like the signs of people not liking miners were there and even like the only like uh, crypto community was like yeah miners you know, they kind of nah, we kind of don't like them so the signs were there that mining was gonna die but I ignored it and by like the end of 2021 like I literally had to liquidate my mining rig to essentially uh, recover as much money as I could because it was literally dying and I ended up with like a two three thousand dollars of uh, debt from it so yeah horror story i mean i think the idea of it was pretty cool back then and if you look at it right now it's actually not profitable however in the future you know it could be profitable you don't know it's honestly like a cycle is you know if you're willing to stack it up and you know flip a coin you might get lucky and for the next cycle you might be ready to make a lot of money it actually hurts because i actually did want to do mining but it's just it's just not profitable and i don't want to recommend anything to this right now i just you know, might as well just, if you're gonna like spend like 70 bucks on electricity, you might as well just put that in the cryptocurrency coin, you know, that you like instead of the wasting on, on electricity. Uh, anyway, uh, until the next one. All right, so next up is actually Reddit churning. Now, this is actually like uh, for credit card people, the people that are into credit cards. I used to be really into credit cards, guys. I actually like, I actually did pretty well for the first three years because, you know, I could actually manage my expenses as well. Uh, but there's a video on the channel called Credit Card is Poison for the Middle and Poor. Uh, you know, you should probably check that out. That's actually going to tell you a lot about credit and the the not like that video in a nutshell what it said is essentially that credit is actually just a wealthy people game and for those people to get those benefits they basically have to make that money through interest and that interest you know who, who's paying the interest for those credit cards it's not the banks banks are making like both lot of money from it it's the middle class and the poor that can't afford things and they put them on credit cards either at an emergency or you know maybe they wanted something they couldn't control themselves honestly it's really dark and just you know, in a nutshell, guys, like Reddit credit cards, you can make your money, but you know, you have to make you have to make money in the first place. Uh, it, it can be really well tagged if you know how to control yourself. Like, say you do psychics, you can use a five percent credit card and make money, or you can sign up bonuses. So you know, it does have its ways of making money, but will you do it? Most likely, if you're middle class or low class, you might be able to keep up with it for a year or two. But after that, eventually, the shark will bite you. Just, just saying, you know, so I'll put it in C tier because you can make money and it is a fantastic micromanagement, uh, you know, thing if you can manage your credit cards. However, you know, not for everybody, not really. Okay, now this one's actually one of my favorites. It is dividend investing. Now, for those of you that are into the investment part of the channel, you guys know that I, I actually think very highly of dividends because dividends is essentially your money working for you. And at the beginning, one of my strategies is that I want to build a, a high dividend 
like portfolio because if you build a high dividend portfolio you can make some pretty decent money from that dividends and then you reinvest that dividend into uh, time for yourself so you can make your own business you can reinvest it into maybe trading if you want to be a trader you know or you can essentially just add that to yourself where okay i make two thousand dollars a month but i make a thousand dollars in dividend now i make three thousand dollars a month and essentially what you're doing is you're buying back your time with dividends uh you know things like jeppy or qild or schd i think those are fantastic dividends and in the long term i think dividends are a fantastic strategy for those that have under a million dollars in net worth I know at least on under under five hundred thousand dollars in net worth because you know in small numbers it doesn't make sense like oh a hundred dollars is just maybe ten bucks in dividends but a thousand dollars is a hundred bucks in month in dividends and how, of course yeah it's high dividends so high risk but you know it's better than just trading in the market and losing it all anyway you know so it's just I think dividend investing is fantastic and it only you only have to do is just buy Jeppy or QILD or SCHD and if you have a hundred K guys you make ten you make a thousand dollars a month in dividends it's absolutely insane and I just think it's an S tier I, I think that's one of my my personal one of my best strategies because if you put 100k in dividends that's a thousand dollars a month and that thousand dollars a month for most people is essentially literally like two weeks of not having to work in those two weeks you can put it in something that makes that you actually want to do or maybe you can put it in trading and become a successful trader that way you know there's the, the potential of having a side income that can replace your time that you work for I think it's fantastic. So S tier for me, and I'll probably stay S tier for a long time until I make a million dollars or something, I don't know. Anyway, on to the next one. All right, so next up is actually one that's for the people that are in the city because all these different psychics, it really depends on where you're at or you know what area of your highly populated city or in the middle of nowhere. Uh, can you, are you in a suburban area? Where are you at, you know? Uh, but Brody is really good for people that are in the city, people, places like LA or people like New York or maybe like a really like city place like, Detroit or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if you're doing roading in, in Detroit, the dogs might have guns or something. But <laughs> yeah, it's essentially a dog walking app. What I'm trying to say, you walk your dog around or walk people's dogs around. They, they pay you 20, 30 bucks per hour. If you have four or five dogs, it's easily 100 bucks a day. You know, it's it's pretty interesting. And if you know a rich client, you can easily make a hundred dollars plus with tips. So. It really just depends on where you're at. If you have a good reputation, it might take some time to build a reputation. So that's why I'm not putting it in like a really high tier. But once you have the reputation and you build your clientele, it can easily be a full-time job. And honestly, just walking dogs. People that love dogs are going to love this one, you know. So I'll put it in C tier. I think it's pretty good. Okay, so this one's actually pretty interesting. Now, this is actually called fish mining or fish breathing or whatever you want to call it. And this actually was a recommendation from one of my friends after my mining rig completely collapsed. He told me, oh, why don't you look into fish breathing? Because uh, I had a friend that, like, his friend, I also actually met him, but one of my friends that hit was his friend, which is also my friend. Uh, he's into, like, aquariums and, like, fish, uh, basically the aquarium thing. And he started telling me about all this stuff, like, like nitrogen cycles and, uh, you know, how to keep the pH levels and, and how to take care of fish and what kind of fish they are and, and how, to, how to handle ammonia and nitrites and nitrate and all this kind of fancy, like, scientific stuff. Uh, essentially, what I'm trying to tell you guys is that if you know a local aquarium uh, store and you can sell your fishes to them, you can start fish breeding. And honestly, I've, I know people that can make 20, 30 bucks a day per, per fish tank. And my friend, the friend of my friend that I know, <laughs> he actually has a shrimp um, breeding tank thing. Or he has like three tanks and all of them have different kinds of shrimp. And one of the meals that a lot of fish breeders buy or a lot of fish owners buy is live shrimp. And he essentially like sold live shrimp to the aquarium store and he could easily make, he must make like 20, 30 bucks per tank. So he was easily making a hundred bucks a day or something like that. I mean, I don't think a day, maybe like a week, 300 bucks a week or something. Uh, but he was making pretty good money because he sold the shrimp to the store. And I mean, it could easily be like four or five hundred dollars. And if you are willing to expand, you can make way more than that. Especially if you just you like start breeding like exotic fishes, like angels or kois. Like some kois are worth like five thousand dollars per fish, which is insane. So yeah, guys. I mean, similar to Rody, you do have to kind of like learn to trade a little bit. But once you do, and once you get the basics, I think it's a really fantastic income source. And it's actually like infinitely scalable because. If you're really into fishes, it can even become a full-time job, just like Rody. You know, it's 
honestly pretty great. I think it's a fantastic C tier. Not for everybody. Not everyone wants to have the smell of fishes or uh, or have the space to have like five different tanks full of five different fishes and having to keep up with all of that. Uh, but if you really like taking care of live animals and you wanted to make an income source, it can actually work pretty well. So C tier. All right, so next up is actually the most popular one. It's food delivery because, you know, it got really popular in the pandemic. People were doing DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all these food delivery apps. And essentially what you do is you, you have your car, you get a DoorDash bag and you just deliver or you get a, a delivery bag and you deliver for people. You know, you deliver for people. Uh, it's honestly really dependent on, on how smart you are with the app and how much knowledge you have on, on like tips and mileage and all this. Uh, but if you're in a really good area, you can easily make 20 bucks an hour. I've seen people make 30 bucks an hour. If you're like in a middle of nowhere, you might be able to get away with 8, 10 bucks an hour. So it really just depending on where you're at. I think it's pretty decent. It's really easy as well. All you need is a car and the bag is just, I think it's a stepping stone to fast food. Uh, however, fast food, you, you actually can end up making more in fast food if you're not careful because you might get thrown really far away and you have to remember if you do an order that's like seven bucks for five miles, you have to drive there and back unless you're willing to just keep going further and further and further away <laughs> i i don't know man it's crazy uh but anyway guys i think it's pretty easy to do and it's honestly anybody with a car can do it so i'd say it's an a tier really good one uh next up is shipped so shipped is essentially like a form of grocery delivery uh, it's really new i really haven't tried it out but i tried instacart and honestly it's the same thing now the difference between instacart and shipped is that with shipped you might end up getting like uh, maybe like a couple stuff that aren't groceries but it is a form of grocery delivery it's mostly used by target and stuff like that i mean the problem is that like like amazon flex it's full of bots so any good order will immediately get snapped up from bots so you gotta be careful uh, I haven't tried it, however, if it's like Instacart, you know, all you need is a phone and an app and it should work. Uh, it's a B tier for me. The reason it's not A tier is because I don't know it well, so I don't know if there's any, any issues with it. But it's a decent B tier essentially, it's just grocery delivery, you know? Next up is Influencer. Now, this one is actually custom made because it, Influencer is very like... It's a very broad definition. Influencer can be a TikTok, an Instagram, or a YouTuber. And uh, I mean, not like a YouTuber, YouTuber, but you know, essentially what you're doing is you are promoting yourself, you're selling yourself in a lifestyle or a mindset or anything. Like I'm selling a mindset, that's why I'm doing with this channel. Uh, and this is specifically for TikTok or Instagram. I think it's a really good combo if you're willing to use it to start an online business or you can get uh, sponsorships and stuff like that. However, it is so competitive that the chances of you becoming an influencer unless you a were really early or to do something that no one else can replicate you have to be extremely unique are really low extremely low guys like this low maybe and chances are you're not gonna be a good influencer you're not gonna be very popular uh, again it's a it's a survivorship bias thing where the people that made it are like oh anyone can do this but the majority of people that try can't do it so it's a c tier for me guys and now the, the reason I didn't put it in D tier is because even though the odds of becoming an influencer are really low, once you become an influencer, guys, oh my gosh, guys, the income potential is essentially, it's essentially unlimited. You can become a millionaire. In fact, most of the high influencers, they make millions of dollars a month. Like, it's just crazy. So, you know, if you can make it through, you'll be very rich. However, because this psychic steel is specifically uh, made for how easy it is to get and how fast can you make money from it, I say it's a, it's a C tier, you know. Not everyone will get it. No, everyone will become an influencer. So, see it is. All right. So next up, uh, by the way, my camera. That's. I'm so sorry. I'm using my phone again. Uh, next up is Instacart. Uh, this one is essentially the same as shipped. All you do is grocery delivery. So you get an order. You go to a, a mall or you go to like a grocery store and you buy the items. And you have to do it really fast, by the way. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. So you have to memorize the layouts and all this. And you know, once you get the items, then you go to the person and you deliver and that's how you make your money honestly it's not bad the only issue with instacart is that you have to memorize the layouts of the stores that you go so you have to really know your area if you want to make more than 15 bucks an hour and also the only con is that it's plagued with bots so there's a lot of bots on the app and if you decide to <laughs> if you decide to like you know get it like stay there and try to get a good order you're gonna have a bad time because the bots are just really really fast so uh, you know, if you know your layouts, you can make 30 bucks an hour. If you don't, you're gonna make 15 bucks an hour. Plus, you have to drive to the customer, and if you don't, if you can't find an order, then you actually have to like 
talk to the customer and if the customer doesn't respond then it's just a pain so you know it, it can work it's just not the best and you know you, you can't make good money though if you're really fast and you know grocery layouts but otherwise it's a b tier the reason it's not a c tier is because again similar to shipped once you know how to do it you can make some quick money and also all you need is a car you need a car and, and, and your phone and you're set you know you don't need many you don't need a lot of stuff so it's a b tier all right, so next up is Rody. Now this is actually from UPS, and it's a form of like transportation where all you gotta do is uh, you go in the Rody app, you look up at the partners they have. They usually have partners like Home Depot, they have a Tractor Supply, they have Walmart, and uh, you know all these kinds of like uh, airports and stuff like that. And what you do is that you essentially deliver stuff from one place to the other. Uh, the only issue with this is that you have to have a big vehicle for this job because a lot of the stuff that you ship are things like Home Depot or Walmart. They're big items. They're like TVs and and for like Home Depot, it can be pallets and stuff like that. So it has to be really big stuff unless you specifically go for like the medicine or for like the small loads. So it can be pretty tedious. And also the other issue is that it's a lot of like miles per delivery. So it might not be worth it if you're trying to chase the route. However, let's say you did an Amazon Flex route, right? Or you're, you're like this is I'm gonna do a specific scenario with like uh, cargo delivery because I I'm, I'm doing the the thing where you live in a van right so you uh, go into a van and let's say you drive from state to state because you can do roading in any state so it's pretty pretty good on that uh, you drive from one state to the other and on the way to the next state you find an order and it's 25 bucks for 60 miles and you, you you pick up the order it's like 50 bucks and you drive if it's only good if you're driving on the way to the stop so you have to like stop and, and look at the routes and see if you're driving there anyway if you're driving there anyway it makes sense or if you're in like a really popular area that's really small and you have a big vehicle like a cargo van i think it makes sense but if you have a small car and you're trying to make like money it's just better to go for another side gig so uh you know it's really specific it's for a very specific kind of people but for those of those those that do it you know they can make some decent money so i'd say it's a c tier c tier Okay, so the next one is uh, drop shipping or online business, which is why I put the Shopify logo. Essentially, what you do is you run an online business, you list products, you make money from them. Uh, the alternative is that you buy stuff from AliExpress, Alibaba, and then you list it. Uh, again, it's it really tough because you have to spend money on it, and once you spend the money, you don't know if you're gonna make that money back, so it really depends on what product you get. It's really competitive, similar to Amazon FBA, you have to compete with hundreds of thousands of potentially hundreds of thousands of people that are trying to do the same thing that you're doing so it's really hyper competitive and uh, again once you end up making a profit or you sell items you end up making less than a minimum wage worker guys it's, it's really rough however if you tag it with something like youtube or influencer or you know you you have a reputation or a brand you might be able to overprice the items and sell shirts and stuff like that so once you tag it with something the income potential is basically unlimited however like i said same thing as influencer most people that try won't make enough money to make it a life like a, a full income and those that do are essentially already rich so it's just it's just really unfair and i put in a c tier it's just most people aren't going to be able to make it however if you do the income potential is basically unlimited you can become a millionaire from it you know just uh try to beat basically everyone else is trying to do the same thing you're doing yeah, it's, it's it's rough you know <laughs> it's really rough all right so next up is street performing now this was actually for those people that aren't in college or like a really busy areas like new york and stuff like that uh you know a street performing i actually met people that have done this and you know you're not gonna make a lot of money but however you can make a really good amount of money for very short amounts of time so if you go to a really busy area and you actually have like a really cool skill and you show it off you can make like 20 30 bucks an hour in tips and uh, what i've seen this tagged really well with is youtube so if you tag it with like tiktoks or instagram or shorts uh you can make some really good money with it it's it's a good compliment to doing youtube or doing in, uh, like influencing uh, because what you do is that you not only are getting paid by tips, but you're also posting it online, which essentially means that your reach is unlimited. I think it's a really good combo. Uh, however, you know, like I said, you you have to drive to the area. You have to know a skill that you can show off that's impressive, like magic, or like maybe turn into a statue or whatever they do. And uh, 
Another way of street performing is, uh, it used to be pranks. People do pranks, they post them on YouTube. That's a good combo with street performing because, you know, pranking in public is a form of street performing. Again, the other one where people put like, they put like cardboard signs and stuff like that and they make people do challenges. That's another form of street performing, you know, but essentially instead of performing for money, you're performing for views. So it's, it's the same thing, you know. Income potential is unlimited. I think it's more accessible than uh, doing like influencing and stuff like that. So I'll put it in B tier. Uh, again, like I said, you're not gonna make a lot of money. However, if you tag it with something else, you can essentially become, the, the, the reach potential is unlimited and you might make 20, 30 bucks uh, an hour if you if you go to a really good area and have a really good skill. Uh, so yeah, it's a good side gig, you know? All right, so next up, instead of doing food delivery or package delivery, you do people delivery. So it's Uber or Lyft. Uh, basically, they're both the same thing. In fact, I actually have seen people do both at the same time, which is kind of weird. I don't, I don't know how you can do that, but I mean, you just go for the higher, higher pay, I guess. But anyway, essentially, what you do is you deliver people, you, you drive people around for, from one place to the other. Depending on the area, you can make. 30 bucks an hour or more. Uh, it's honestly very tip dependent. So if you're in a really good area, you get like a really rich person, you can easily make 50 bucks an hour or something like that. So the income potential is insane. However, there are risks that, you know, you have to keep in mind, like wear and tear, depreciation. Also the fact that you don't know, um, I don't know if, I don't know if they changed this, but you don't know who you are delivering, especially if it's like somebody that just made the app and they like don't have a face or anything. You don't know who the heck you're delivering. So it is a, like a danger hazard. You don't know if you're delivering like a drug lord or something so it can be kind of shady however you know like i said it, it, you know if you're really social and like talking to people you can make some good money however i am not social at all i hate talking to people most of the time which is ironic because i made youtube videos but anyway uh you know it, it really can depend on who you meet and it's really tip dependent on if you make more than 30 bucks an hour however on average you do make more than food delivery Again, the issue is you have to talk to people, so. I don't know, it's kinda weird for me. I would put it in A tier because all you need is a car, but because I'm not social, I'll put it in B tier, so. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just, just because I don't like talking to people. If you like talking to people, it might be an A tier for you, but the fact that you don't have to talk to people on Amazon Flex or uh, food delivery like DoorDash or Uber Eats just makes it way more better for me that I like uh, those over this one. Uh, anyway, on to the next one. All right, so next up is Twitch streaming. Now, for those of you who don't know what Twitch streaming is, it's essentially a form of like live streaming. What you do is you stream yourself doing something that you like or you watch other people do something that you find interested and you watch them and essentially it's like a form of community where you're, you're with a group of people watching somebody do something and you basically become like a form of reactive a way where if you do something, if they do something you like, then you say you like it. If you do something you hate, it's a form of like hive mindset where everyone's like, working together to let the streamer know if they like something or not. It's kind of weird to me. I, I personally don't watch Twitch streamers. However, I, I have watched like some videos where people are like Switch streaming. It seems like it's really good for people to play video games, uh, you know, like doing like challenges and stuff like that. It's really good for people that like doing like awkward challenges like sleeping or reacting to videos or eating, you know, it's kind of really weird, man. I, I mean, I don't know what the point of that is, but hey, some people like it and, it, you know, it's in the numbers, like the proof is in the numbers, guys. Look how much money some of these people can make. They can make hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. It's absolutely insane. However, if you do decide to become a Twitch streamer by just streaming by itself, chances are you're not gonna make it unless you become very extreme. Like you have to be re uh, like kind of an extremist. So you're gonna get a lot of people that are gonna like you and you're gonna get a lot of people that are gonna hate you. It's really weird. Uh, and again, it's a really good compliment if you're doing something like YouTube or like influencing. However, in it by itself, I don't know if it's very profitable unless you're like really like extreme on something. So, you know, it's a C tier for me, guys. I'm sorry. I, I mean, like I said, most people, most people that try it aren't going to succeed because nobody cares about nobody that nobody cares about. Oh my God, try saying that five times. And, you know, because people don't care about you, they're not going to watch you. However, if you have a, a following or something, you might get some people to watch you and then they'll, do they'll donate to you and stuff like that. Uh, again, like I said, the income potential is unlimited, but most people won't do it, so I'll put it in C tier. And, however, if you do become a Twitch streamer and you complement it with YouTube or something like that, or an influencer, the income potential is absolutely insane, guys. I mean, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, you can make so much money, it's crazy. All right, so next up is YouTube. And honestly, as much as I want to say good things about YouTube, guys, YouTube is a wonderful platform. I'm just gonna say that from the beginning, guys. The potential of making money from anything that you find interesting or like is absolutely crazy. No longer do you have to take a normal field of work. You can now become a YouTuber. And YouTubers are really influential, guys. Like, some of these YouTubers can become millionaires, and it's really insane to me. Again, you know, the, the potential of YouTube is basically 
unlimited you can make as much money as you can if if once you grow big enough like you can become really massive i mean look at the top channels guys they're absolutely crazy again the, the only issue with youtube is that it's really competitive and it's no longer a platform where somebody without anything can just show up and become a success in one to two years you either need help from somebody that's big you need to be very extreme or you need uh, how do i say this <clears throat> to uh maybe fake it for a bit <laughs> you have to be somewhat fake you know and yeah it, it has been since the beginning of time guys most videos that are really popular end up being somewhat fake you know it's just i don't want to say negative things today because i actually do want to do this too for for a bit you know i think i think the aspect of just it's it's just making videos or whatever you like it's kind of cool however most people that try youtube including this channel you know i haven't seen any money from it yet and i've been doing this for five four months you know, it really just depends on on if you can get your message out there and if you can build an audience. However, most people won't build an audience. However, once you do, like everything in life, it, you know, the income potential is basically unlimited, guys. So I'd say give it a go. Uh, again, because of the fact that it's so hard to make money, you have to put so much time and effort up front. It's a C tier. But if honestly, if, if I could put this in terms of income potential, this would be an S tier. Uh, if I could put this in terms of income potential, a lot of these would be up higher, way higher, and a bunch of these would be way lower. But, you know, I'm doing it based on how easy it is to make money from it and how fast can you get started. So, uh, YouTube is a C tier, unfortunately. So, yeah. All right, so next up is flipping. And the reason why I put this character flipping a table is because what you gotta do is essentially you buy something for cheap and you sell it for more. That's literally the purpose of flipping. And flipping comes in many forms. It can be something like, this is, I'm actually gonna tell you a couple strategies. So one of the strategies that I've seen is people go to Facebook Marketplace and they go into the free section and they look for stuff they like and then they go in a big car like a cargo van for example and they get that stuff for free they're essentially throwing people's they're basically getting people's trash right and then they list it on facebook marketplace they fix it up clean it up or whatever list it for 10 20 bucks and then they sell it like in a single day it's crazy i've seen people that they basically every week they buy stuff through garage sales or, or they go to the facebook marketplace and get stuff for free and then they and the weekends they make like a little garage sale and they put all the items out so people can buy them for 10 20 bucks honestly i've seen people make some really decent money from it you can easily make i don't think you're gonna make a thousand dollars a week unless you find like a really good item but you can easily make 100 200 bucks 300 bucks a week uh, or maybe even more if you if you really do find some good items uh, again other people what they do is they they buy cars like for cheap they fix them up and then sell them for more uh, again you can also tag this with Turo. you maybe you buy a salvage car you fix it up and then you list it on Turo, and then you go you got a money making income real estate is basically another form of flipping you buy a broken property or a a house for cheap and then you sell it for more or then you turn that into a rental property you know all of this stuff is basically a form of flipping you buy something for cheap you sell it for more stocks is another form of flipping you buy something for for cheap and then you sell it for more or you do like most people did this year they buy high and sell low you know it's just it depends guys it's really more of a cycle for those kinds of things but for flipping you just buy something cheap and fill it for more it's honestly really really easy and the reason i'm going to put it on b tier is because it really is depending on what you do again it's easier than becoming an influencer it's easier than becoming a YouTuber or an online store owner because all you gotta do is just find whatever you like, whatever hobby you have. If you know how to repair stuff, you can buy broken phones and fix them up and sell them. You know, the, the income potential is up to you, honestly, and that's why it's so good and that's why I put it in B tier. So, uh, yeah, B tier it is. Oh my gosh. Okay, so last one is imagination, guys. And it's kind of convenient that this is actually the last one because imagination is essentially, I'm gonna put it on a, a definition. If there is a will, there is a way. And if you want to build something, whether it's a video game or an uh, idea or a business or maybe a, a form of making money, you know, if you really sit down and you think of stuff and you actually look at what it is that you want to do, eventually your imagination will give you a path. And you know, all these are just ways of making money. Like they, they all, they all ha have limitations. However, with imagination, these limitations can be expanded indefinitely. And you know, it first start with an idea, guys. Everything that has been built in this society is based on a vision and that vision if you can sell it to others you can make basically anybody you know, anything that you want and anything that you think others want you can make it a reality so imagination for me guys it is an s tier because i just think it's really good and yeah it might you know you might think oh imagination you're not making money from your imagination but i do think that you know with enough drive and enough motivation anything can be possible guys the biggest dreams and those, those dreams that you see people having right now they all started with a vision and that vision 
you know, you create it. You have to sit down and think, what am I going to do? How am I going to accomplish this goal? And yeah, it might be discouraging when you're not making money from that goal and stuff like that, which is why I decided to come up with a steer list because you know, just showing you the ways of making money. Yeah, the, maybe you can just have a car and, and do food delivery and package delivery and stuff like that. But you know, as you go down, a lot of people think that first you have to be somebody to build something. No, it's actually the other way around. You have to build something first and then you become somebody. So that's why I put imagination as an S tier because once you build that vision and others can see it and then others want that vision, you essentially can profit off of that in an incredible way. So for me, imagination is an S tier and it is the foundation of everything that you want. Same as dividend investing, you know, if you can manage your finances properly, dividend investing will give you the time to build what it is that you want. So that's why you put it in S tier. And you know, yeah, the income potential is not maybe, the reason it's it's there because it is capped to whatever you think it is. If you make $100,000 a year, that dividend investing will be much higher than somebody that is $50,000 a year, you know? And that imagination of somebody that maybe wants to just have a small business rather than the imagination wants to create an empire, it all really is dependent on your mindset, guys. So that's why I put them in S tier. Anybody can do them. It's just dependent of how much you want it and how much are you willing to sacrifice for it, so. I don't know, I just think it's pretty wholesome and it's just a, a good way to show you guys that, you know, even if you're limited by your income or what you think you can do right now, eventually, with enough time and, and dedication, you can accomplish anything that is way higher. And those things that are in the S tier that most people want, like influence and, and maybe an online business and stuff like that, they all really do start with a foundation that you build, whether it is a skill that you obtain or the time that you dedicate to something. So that's why I put them lower. You have to first become somebody and then you build something. Or, well, you have to first build something and then you become somebody. It's, it's hard with all these ideas, you know. Uh, but anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this video up. So hopefully it helped you out. I mean, honestly, if I watched this video when I was like 16 or 15 years old, it would have completely changed my life because... First, I thought you actually had to build something and then you become somebody or you know, you have to first like, oh, you have to follow what everyone else is doing and then you'll become somebody. You know, you, you can choose your own path. You know, it's just, it really is dependent on, on how big your ambition is and, and how much you're willing to show others what you can do. Uh, you know, it's really cool. I just think it's a really nice video and honestly, it took me a lot of time to make, so I really do appreciate it if you give this video a like. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.